Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. We're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. Um, there's been some concerns coming out in the Rocket League community lately about what Sonics has been doing about their game and how they're improving it. Uh, things are definitely changing for the better. I'm just trying to figure out exactly what's going to be happening at the end of this month. But I'd like to preface this video by saying this will be a discussion between me and my editor. We're just gonna be having a chat and uh, talking through some points. Uh, the idea behind this is to talk about the expectations of this new update that's gonna be coming out at the end of July that they expect to be talking about. Um, the change of the new season, new RLCS, and uh, the implications of that. And basically just talk about what needs to be done to make this game what it can be and what everyone believes it can be. So I'd like to first welcome Danny here. I want to say hello. 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 How's it, how's it going, man? Good, man. How are you? Not too bad. I mean, I'm a little frustrated, but at the same time, uh, hopeful that some things happen. Uh, as we look in some of the, the recent posts from Psyonix and Rocket League, um, they just celebrated five years. Uh, and counting obviously they're still going um but one of their recent patches just started to announce that they have some stuff in the works and this is sort of where this video starts off with um how you know they say that it'll be worth the wait so i'm trying to reserve you know too many complaints about how the game's been for the last five years since they're trying they're trying to move in the right direction uh but sort of just speak on what what we expect to see from this update and hopefully the changes that, that are coming out of it so like what are you personally most excited for changing in the game and uh you know what update would you like to see come out to make the game better i mean i think i think it's nice that they hinted at new ranks and like changes to competitive in general but i feel like that's not the main problem with the game at this point i feel like they need to be adding more content for the casual player not the player that's either still climbing the ranks or at the top of the ranks trying to get to a professional level i feel like that everyone kind of below that in the in the rank list needs more content to stay engaged with the game and i feel like without that it's just kind of getting boring you know? right so i actually just recently took some pictures of uh in-game players online and in playlists and uh this was during peak hours this was 9 30 p.m on a monday night you know 9 30 p.m eastern on a monday night you'd expect you know quite a few players playing uh in that evening since that that opens up the door for players in pacific time after work hours and uh possibly even some late night uh european players and stuff so what we can see here is players online was 198,599 uh in ranked here with 53,000 players and then when you go over to casual you can see only 38,000 which is a little bit less than ranked but it's actually a considerable amount uh when you consider how few players are playing in ranked and with extra modes we have 9,381 so a combined total of less than 100,000 and with that in mind, where are the other 100,000 people that are on this players online <laughs> list here? <laughs> so this is what I was I was really concerned about when I just noticed this. Um, you know, they could be in private matches. They could be just AFK in training or AFK in total. Um, but these numbers are a little bit inflated to see just how many people there that are in ranked. And, uh, you know, Rocket League seems to be, or Sionix seems to be prioritizing looking at uh, ranked or competitive play with esports, which RLCS Season 10 or X, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's definitely good news to see bigger prize pools and a different uh, format. But at the end of the day, the core gameplay is still the same. Yeah, and I feel like I feel like that number being so low with the amount of players in ranked kind of has to do with the fact that it's unchanged, which is fine. I feel like that's the base that everything else should be built around. I don't feel like they should change the like the core gameplay or anything like that. Right. But there, there needs to be more to do to keep people in the game. Like, what what are people doing if they're not in ranked? Yeah, it's like you're either in training or you're playing competitively. There's no like fun little moments. And and that's sort of where my channel comes in. Like I really am still in Rocket League at the moment. I just hit 10,000 hours and I will be making a video on that in the future about what I've learned about the game and stuff like that. But as far as me, like the only reason I've hit 10,000 hours is because of all the times that we've played the custom maps. Like you've played some of them, Danny, like on, on my channel, like the, even the puzzle map that you got to do some of the co-op for a little <laughs> yeah. bit. Like. That's some of the most fun stuff for me. Like when I'm playing, I get actually genuinely really very excited about playing those. Yeah, and that, that stuff's a lot of fun. And like, I would love to to see them do more with that to so I could play those maps with my friends and things like that. Because from working with you, I know how to set that up pre like pretty easily, but it's still such a process that I can't get anyone to play the custom maps with me. You know what I mean? Right. So like, if they can make that more accessible that in itself would be huge and Sionix doesn't even have to 
do that much outside of enabling like playing workshop maps in games and like private matches and things like that because then there's already this like sea of content from you and people like froyo and a bunch of other creators that all they have to do is enable that and all that content is basically added right into the game immediately yeah and that actually just does bring into our first uh, little point here of custom app support you know there's several ways you could approach this uh we have notes here about you know you could allow players to load maps in private match but if you were to make it in private match then that would have to also allow the servers to download the map if you think about csgo and the way that they have their surfing maps and and different multiplayer maps that you can play on with uh, other people when you look through the servers uh what it it prompts you that you haven't played this map before so then it tells you if they have to download it before you can join um so that's a one way to do it also you can allow players to host their own on their own computer and have the other players connect through the game similar way to that we do it now but without all that pesky process i think also uh in-game custom apps for console would be great if we can find a way to do an in-game file upload that way it's hosted on the rocket league servers somewhere and then that way any platform can join because i'd love to do streams where i just play you know hungry hungry hippos the new game that i'm creating right now uh which will be out soon like if I could just play that with people and do like little tournaments and fun fun game modes, use their tournament in-game system, which we'll talk about later, uh, to host those kind of things and make it more interesting to stream. Because right now, you can see like, if you go through the Rocket League stream, like the category, most people are either in training or just grinding ranked, and it's like just the same mm -hmm. dull thing over and over and over again. Yeah, and just to just to kind of show why that would be good for Psionics, also having all that stuff is going to keep keep people engaged in the game and keep rocket league in front of people's faces more which obviously is good for psionics so obviously a lot of this stuff is from the perspective of a content creator or a player like myself and how it benefits us but stuff like that would help Psy psionics out as well right and the thing is that the creator's my point of view like my point of view it's not really from a creator's point of view strictly because it's what i want to see in the game to play like i don't want to Put out content for the fact that i think it would just do well it's more it's more about the actual genuine excitement and enjoyment and other people share that as well and, and a lot of people talk I've, I've done some polls actually basically i was just ro rolled a poll to see who watches my custom map videos and who plays them in turn so it's actually only nine percent of the people that watch my custom map, map videos actually play them and there's a lot of people who watch them and enjoy them but they just can't do it either they're on console or they don't play them because they're on pc and it's way too difficult to do so if there's a better integration better way to just provide this content for so many people uh it would be so much easier and, and i feel like it would motivate more map creators to put out the content if they were rewarded by the community you know embracing their creativity and just playing it and sharing you know the love for all this custom content that you know i've made 58 maps now and uh i'm not stopping but at the same time, like it's getting harder and harder to motivate myself to keep going when when Rocket League just hasn't made any changes to incorporate some sort of gameplay uh, perspective in the game. So, yeah, I, I, and I could only imagine like how that feels from from your position creating the actual maps. But I feel like this just goes to show that there's a very big demand for this kind of content, and like that's that's an interesting position for Psionics to see that demand and. At least from what they tell us, it seems like they just don't care or they aren't doing anything unless they are and just aren't saying anything about it, which I, I hope that's at least the case. Although it would be nice to hear them talk about what they're planning on doing. And that's that's one thing, right? It's, it's, it's just communication between the community and the, the dev team. Uh, Sionox has 135 employees and uh, I'm sure they're working hard at stuff of some sort but we just don't know what it is and, and we don't know how how their company is split up obviously and we're not trying to target anybody we're just trying to say there needs to be more of a clear roadmap of what they intend to do and if they can't make that request or that roadmap that they they originally planned they need to come out and say hey we didn't make it you know the community would embrace that and they'd be like okay that's fine no big deal like where are you at right now how are you doing like sort of have like a, an ongoing conversation open communication with them um there's so many things that they've put into the game. If you look at the infographic here of the uh, the the five years they've they've gone into the game, uh, or they've put in the game of all these different moments and, and mile, milestones, you can see there's snow day added, hoops added, rumble added, uh, drop shot added. All four of those have been added into the game and barely touched. I think rumble was changed once by spikes. They changed spikes how that works. Uh, snow mm -hmm. day was added. They they even added the uh, the anniversary uh, event, the first anniversary where it was. 
uh, the new the new stadium or the old stadium from the old game remade into a Rocket League map. And I've thought since that map was added, okay, now they're going to add Snow Day version of that anniversary map, but they never did. They never included it. And it just makes so much sense that it's a hockey map and it's got an right. icy floor. Like it could have been perfect for that kind of thing. So, all right. And I, I may be a little bit ignorant because I don't do game development, but I can't imagine it's impossible to just add that map to the rotation in Snow Day. It's it's not. It's definitely not uh, super difficult. You have to, I'll, I'll, you have to include the UI and you know the directories and all that stuff. I'm sure there's more to it than I than I even know. But as a map maker myself. Like when I when I put maps in, you know how it works. We basically put files in specific spots and it loads it in. So uh, I'm mm -hmm. sure it's not too difficult. And even uh, for the case of the standard drop shot map that I made, the map file size is not that big. It was only like 20 or so megabytes because most of it's reference packages and reused meshes and, and stuff like that from the game already. So reusing the, the stuff that they have in the game already can really help downsize any updates and stuff if they want to include more limited time modes. Or make it so that limited time modes go into the game and then they can remove it and re-download new stuff for when an update comes out and just keep keep on changing it. Mm -hmm. And and just to go back to what we were talking about with the transparency thing, um, I feel like it's being in the dark is one thing, but at the same time, there's been multiple times where Sionox has talked about plans that they have and then not followed through with what they say they were going to do, like with building on the tournaments thing or... I don't remember if they said they were going to build on clubs or not, but it's it's things like that that it's like we have no idea what to expect. Like they could they could say that they're going to add stuff to tournaments as they did and then nothing happens. So now that we're in a position where they say that something big is coming, we don't even know if tournaments are still on their immediate roadmap or not so and we have it, no idea like what's going on it's also scary because when they say they have a big announcement like it could be a letdown and that's what i'm a little bit worried about is that they they say they have this big thing planned it'll be worth the wait i really hope that it is like for the game that'd be great um mm -hmm. but there's a lot of things right now on the list of stuff that they've just put on the sidelines and really kind of just tossed into the game half-assed really quickly and uh you know they could revisit them and they even talked about it in one of Sunless Khan's recent videos when he talked to the devs about how they wish they could have done more, but they never really came out to say, you know, why they didn't do more, why they reduced what was in it, and and why why they haven't really prioritized fixing it when there's so many little microscopic mini issues that could make the tournament mode so much better and so much more enjoyable for streamers. For one, uh, having the streamer be able to play in their tournament and then also view the games and spectate if they lose the games or even spectate in general if they if they finish their game quickly why can't they jump into another match and watch there's so many little things like that uh i have a lot of issues where people are trying to join my tournaments and it's completely open from unranked to grand champion with every single uh every single rank is allowed to join and every single platform is allowed to join but for some reason it still says they, they, they don't meet the requirements so there's a lot of issues like that that could be fixed quite quickly and just little quality of life things that could really, really help the game be more polished. And I just don't know what they're doing because they keep adding these new uh, Millennium, for example, the new Millennium uh, drops, the new items. Uh, they kind of just push these these items in your face and they, they charge you $20 for Gravity Bomb or, or the new Interstellar decal. And they're basically saying that they think that that one cosmetic is worth the exact same amount as the entire game and that also brings it into the next point of free to play i was just gonna i was actually just gonna add that okay. even though like you know you know you're gonna have the comments where people talk about how the art team is different than the development team and things like that but even still it just kind of shows where psionics priorities and resources are as a whole company you know what I mean yeah like, like it speaks it speaks wonders right like when you have an entire company of 135 people but the production is only out of the art team for more cosmetics and more things that would cost players money outside of their pocket of like spending money on the game because it's not free to play at the moment uh it does it does seem to the outside viewer that that is their focus even even so when the f the fifth year anniversary came out they brought out this formal fancy uh decal and it wasn't given for free for the people who have played the game and, and enjoyed it for so many years it was a dollar so even still when they provide something new uh, to celebrate, you still have to put a little bit of money into the game. And it's like, I don't know why they think they have to charge money every single time they add something like that. Like they could just give it as a gift uh, mm -hmm. to thank players, uh, especially since they've been bought by Epic Games. There's so many little things like that that just make me a little bit concerned for where the priorities are at. 
and yeah and and a lot of that stuff would be less of a like less of an issue at least from my perspective if the game was free right yeah and and moving into free to play like if you made the game free to play i feel like i even personally would be more inclined to support the game uh i still do uh in a lot of buy like i bought the fancy formal i bought uh the gravity bomb i didn't buy the interstellar because i have my own decal and setup that i use for all my videos but uh, I don't even have the rocket pass because I'm not really interested in the items and that. And and if the game was free to play and it supported more players and more players came in and more people will like watch content because they were more in intrigued about the game and all that stuff, like it'd be much easier to support the game and that money would be made back like tenfold uh, by making the game free to play. Because you look at Fortnite or any other games that have free to play and in-game uh, currencies and stuff like that. It works a lot better just because there's so many players that jump in for free and then realize they love the game and want to, you know, help uh, push the game forward. Yeah, and like to compare it to Fortnite, I feel like they're they tried to price things similarly to Fortnite, but I feel like I feel like that's not like that that shouldn't be the case with Rocket League because there are so many items that I feel like, at least from my from my point of view, I feel like the more items you have, the less valuable each particular item is. I agree. So charging twenty dollars for a black market decal that's been in the game when there's nearly thirty black market decals altogether is just ridiculous. Yeah, because like with Fortnite, they come out with one new skin and it's the big thing that comes out. It's like, oh my gosh, that's the next big thing. Everyone's gonna get it. Like, but you have Gravity Bomb, for example. There's twelve different colors of it. I'm not going to spend twenty dollars on twelve different colors of of gravity bomb just because I want to select one one day. Like right. if you're gonna if you're gonna charge twenty dollars, you should let the color be chosen by the player uh, and stuff like that. Like when they when they use it, so there's a lot of stuff like that. Like and speaking of color, you know, a color wheel in the garage. We've had so many skins and so many different uh, esports decals that completely override the whole blue and orange side teams. Uh, it's just a little thing that could be changed as well. Just to have a color wheel that allows black and white as well, a full color range. Um, moving into the garage stuff, car presets menu with cars shown. So you can look at like maybe five at a time uh, just to reduce uh, performance issues. Uh, more specific filters in the, uh, the garage filters as well, like certifications, actual types of certifications, actual colors, um, all that stuff. Maybe be able to search a little bit easier and move through and, and make some folders for based on those kind of things. There's so many little things that could be fixed. How about allowing players to copy a preset over and then make small changes to see if they like a certain type and they can they can jump into uh to free play and test those out. For me, for me the garage thing isn't as as big of a an issue as it is for a lot of people, but there's that is like one of the draws to Rocket League for a lot of people though is just being able to customize your car however you want and I believe that they mentioned before that they were going to make quality of life changes to to the garage a few times and that's where it's it's like a letdown that they aren't doing little things like that like it doesn't have to be a whole new game mode or even a whole new map or anything like that but like like where are the little changes here and there you know what i mean and trying to be optimistic optimistic that does kind of give me hope for this update because like you said maybe they they're putting all their resources into something that's actually huge and actually going to be really good for the game that they just can't do anything else but at least from from the outside looking in it doesn't it doesn't feel like that so all of this stuff just feels like like a letdown as a player right and this is why i'm like we're kind of treading lightly here because we we want to make sure that uh we wait until the actual update comes out uh i believe they've extended it till the august uh, august 31st we had to find that in the rocket pass uh, it's actually at the top i think it's march 25th of august 31st it doesn't actually state in their latest no news what what day that was going to till, but we're going to going to assume that the Rocket League season fourteen will end when the Rocket Pass does, as they stated in the uh, the new patch notes or the the new update. Uh, there's just so many things, so many little things. We have a full document going right now of all the different stuff that they could improve. Some are very minor, but just would make the quality of life so much better for everybody. Um, for example. Uh, the replay system overhaul, being able to archive replays in a group or folder, make folders of certain replays. How about filter your replays through private match games, ranked matches, custom maps, filter by date, you know, maybe even search for names, stuff like that. Right now, if you have like thousands of replays, it actually takes the game quite a while to even filter through and, and search all of them. It takes a while to load it up. So mm -hmm. ways to clean that up and, you know, sort of segregate sections of your, your replays from even 2015 onwards, uh, would be very very nice yeah and all those all those little things like that add up in my opinion 
and again i don't want to just sit here and trash psionics because i've like this is my favorite game and it has been for a long time and i now kind of work like I, my job is a result of that game existing and i want i want nothing more than the game to succeed and that's exactly it I, and there, it, there's so much potential for it yeah like i i will be forever thankful for rocket league and psionics for making you know this platform available to us to show our creativity and you know for all the creators out there like with what is in the game there is not much content to work off of that's new uh because of like the lack of new content coming out but we still have all these creative minds like musty and sunless and john and so many more mercy I, I would go on and on and on obviously but like so many people coming up with new ideas new ways to spice up the game and some of these could just be integrated into the game to make it more available to everybody else um you know there's just so many little little changes like for private and local matches uh allow uh players to be the host of the server instead maybe make it so that everyone connects to them if you want uh that kind of stems to the the map the map creation and custom maps how about mm -hmm. presets for mutator options Let, allow people to make changes to mutators and then name and save them allow more than two teams so you can make it like three four five teams make a triangular map or, or something like that make allow people to make custom maps based on different goals and stuff uh, allow selecting colors for all four or five of the teams uh how about a free-for-all mode for that 1v1 v1 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 <laughs> like stuff like that there's so many how about a private match search menu for public lobbies include a checkbox for public or private matches allow the selection of admin roles so recently i've been given admin roles for my euro cup tournament for example being able to pause and change the time and stuff like that it's really helpful if any issues arise um and then prompt a player when when joining a lobby that there are admin controls that way if you're doing a tournament it makes sure that players know that there are powers involved and that way we can't have anybody abusing powers during online matches another big thing that i've been worried about for a while or not worried about just thinking about is mutator sliders instead of set options so you know how you have small or medium or large ball and stuff like that i want a slider mm -hmm. for like scale like 0 0.5 50 percent the size of the regular ball yeah, or that would, that would be really neat yeah number of balls they actually have these hidden mutators that they've never released like number of balls i don't know the other one there's another one that's like really really big but that number of balls mutator for some reason is just hidden in the options and we can access it uh through Bakke's mod and other plugins but for some reason sonics just never went hey i'll just throw that in the game you know what i mean so it's weird that it's just sitting there. It could be like activated at the click of a button, uh, but they just don't. And it's been sitting there for updates and updates and updates. And we keep asking for them to make changes. They just never do. So there's so many little things they could increase, increase the play replayability for private matches and local matches. For ranked matches and quality of life for those kind of things, uh, there's a lot of things that people like from Baki's mod that can be included in the actual game. And I'm sure Baki's would love to see some of the stuff that he's worked on be put into the actual game. Like allowing pov goal replays in the game so like how bakas mod has it so when a goal is happening you can choose to look at the replays from a perspective of another player if you press y or something or triangle um for this is a little thing but fixing spawn disadvantage on kickoff when players are down so if you have 1v2 it seems like sometimes if you're in the wrong spawn position you're always going to be behind the person that's on the corner uh, that's something that can be fixed if the first person spawning is always on the diagonal that'd be very nice allowing spectating a friend's match that way uh you can watch players matches in the past by like 15 seconds you could watch all the povs from other players as well uh just gives like an option like in league of legends you can go and spectate someone's match if they're in ranked or something like that um the potential here is to allow a ping slider so i know that when i connect to europe i can either get 140 ping or 80 ping i'd like to be able to slide that that range to maybe eight from 80 or like zero to 120 maximum that way i don't find servers on the very far east side of europe uh, that way i can inc uh, increase my range of searching and then also allowing the choice of what side to spawn on demos we've talked about this for a while as a community uh being able to choose where to spawn after after a demo it's the only rng in the game at the moment other than rumble and stuff like that but in the actual ranked when you get demoed you have no choice on what spawn you take another thing that people have talked about for a while is bringing back rocket labs for those people who are newer to the game rocket labs was a thing where sonic started testing new shapes of maps and stuff and I think we kind of, as a community, bashed those Rocket Lab maps quite a bit. And Sionix yeah. kind of got deterred from making any new ones. Yeah, for me, I, I liked Rocket Labs a lot. I didn't play it like a, a whole lot, but I felt like getting rid of it was definitely a mistake because I feel like I feel like the non-standard maps were kind of ahead of their time, right? Like there wasn't a large number of people that were very much used to the standard maps because the game was a lot newer than it is now. Um, I feel like that that could have had 
th they should have let that sit and kind of give people time to get accustomed to everything. But now that we do have a much larger player base of people that are comfortable with the game, I feel like bringing back stuff like that is a great way for them to actually take those ideas and maybe turn them into something and see what people say about them because they have all of those maps and there's they're doing nothing with them like there's there's nothing for those maps to do outside of private match if you choose to play those maps yeah and and the only one they've actually made any changes to was the rocket uh what was it? underpass they made they changed underpass into neo tokyo the original neo tokyo which was i feel like a success for a while and people didn't like it in ranked which is fair um but it's not it's not to say that it doesn't deserve a place in rocket league somewhere um for example yeah. like having the extra modes i'm not sure why they removed extra modes from casual and added it to ranked they they needed to just keep both of them i'm not really sure how their servers work but i, I don't see an issue with dedicating certain servers to different game modes randomly i don't see the issue with that I'm, i mean obviously i'm not really someone who works in networking and stuff but for them to remove the casual rumble and snow day and all that stuff and then move it into ranked you're not adding content you're just changing what the content is and how it is perceived yeah i i think i think that was kind of insane i don't think that the extra modes need like skill-based matchmaking like that or e even if it was skill-based matchmaking to to like show it and to show the ranks and make it that kind of environment and punish people who just want to like chop in and play for a little bit maybe they got a, a toxic lobby or something they can't leave and find a new lobby just to enjoy the little bit of time that they can spend on rocket league they leave and then they get banned for five minutes because now it's a competitive playlist and not just for fun you know what i mean yeah i, I agree with that like it's like it seems like they're trying to push towards being a very competitive esport game and I, un I understand that side of it but you know there's always fun things on the side that can keep someone who is competitive interested in the game uh to be able to like lay back for a bit and just like play some other fun stuff that's what i always did when i was in competitive esports in in rlcs like I'd, I'd love to have some time where we just do boomer on some stupid map or or play like one of the new game modes i was creating so i'm always looking to keep the game fresh and interesting for everybody um and i think rocket league Sion like psionics could could learn from the creators that have sort of defined what is possible by this game the potential uh, and there's just so many little things that you can think of uh i may release this document for everybody to see uh if the, if you guys want to check it out we're not going to touch everything here just try to touch main points and we're going to be adding to it as we go um but if, a big thing for me is a few ui changes specifically for rlcs you can see all these new streaming uh tournaments uh stream tournaments lately that have these new uis that look very very clean look more professional and more like a, a sports sort of broadcast and rlcs is still stuck with that original you know, just placing something over top of the original scoreboard. Uh, it'd be nice to have some UI changes to be able to remove the scoreboard or remove your HUD if you're doing certain things. Like, I want to be able to remove uh, the HUD for certain things like my custom game modes. Um, so certain options like that is really nice. Uh, a few game gameplay changes that I'd like to see or at least be tested and see how people feel about it is number one, show boost next to nameplates in some way. So maybe have a number with a little circle that shows your little boost amount as you're driving around. Uh, for mm -hmm. your teammates that way not for your the opponents obviously but only for your teammates um same thing with the rumble power up so you should have like on the left side boost and then on the right side maybe the rumble power up that you have or maybe the timer for how your rumble your power up is waiting um another questionable thing that we've talked about uh, in the past is indicating when you have a flip or not on a flip reset so like a little indicator that's maybe black or white depending on whether you have the indicator uh or the flip available um, uh, i feel like I feel like that that would even be nice if they added that to training and free play. Like I know you can access that with Bacchus mod in um, free play and training like that, but like why can't they just add that to the game for everybody? Because then people on console and things can see that kind of stuff too. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's on PC now that we take for granted, like Bacchus mod, MMR, and stuff like showing the MMR on the scoreboard and stuff like that, um, or even on your little menu. Uh, I actually don't even, I've had box mod for so long now that I don't even know if I removed it, like what would be gone. Cause there's so many things that are like little incorporated things like auto saving replays is nice. Um, mm -hmm. you should have that as an option in the game in the first place. There's so many little things. Um, like there's so many UI changes that I would love to see at least tested. Uh, no one's saying they have to make these changes. It's their game no one, they don't really owe anybody anything, but to at least explore the option or at least give us an answer back um on 
what they plan on doing with these this information uh whether or not they want to make the changes if they feel like it's not the best for the game like that would probably be really respectable from the community they would they would appreciate the response and them taking the time to say hey we've thought about that we don't really want that in our game because it is their game but at least to hear back from them in the response to the community would be great yeah just to hear hey we've tried this or we we talked it over we don't really like the idea of this just little things like that and that just comes back to the communication thing right uh speaking of communication um on the main menu there isn't really a great way of communicating to the main audience of what news is going out i know they have that thing that comes on screen sometimes or if you can press like triangle or y it comes over the news screen i think a fully dedicated uh news menu would be great for esports and for just overall news and patch notes i think it'd be great if they had a link to the esports website uh, recent tournament news, upcoming tournaments, ways to sign up, player interviews on a tab, uh, you know, team, new teams coming in, new orgs, interviews from the orgs, uh, or to the orgs, either way. And then a news page uh, as well for linking to patch notes, changes, uh, roadmap, uh, current news, current plans, uh, stuff they're working on always, uh, stuff that's going to be coming out in the future. You know, like, hey, little little teasers of like, you know, here's, here's what's going on. Here's a trailer of of the uh, fifth anniversary stuff like that could have been in the game right there uh, instead of on their twitter because you know as, me as much as i'd love to say that twitter is a good place to reach your entire community it is not i have you know over 300,000 subscribers on youtube now and my twitter is only 60,000 followers so that's only a 20 percent uh <laughs> crossover so if i was to only post on my twitter of things i'm working on or things i'm planning uh it wouldn't get to everybody and uh, that's sort of why I use my community tab and stuff. So if Rocket League had a main way of doing that, that's in their game, uh, it would get to more of their players. I know so many, so many, so many of these updates, like Spike Rush came out and they're like, wait, there's a new game mode? What's going on? I didn't even know that was happening. Mm -hmm. uh, or wait, Heatseeker, what is this? And they thought, like when I first showed Heatseeker on my, on my stream, someone asked me, did you create this? Because they don't know about it. They never heard about it. Like they, they don't, they don't push it out to the, the main audience enough and i think the casual viewer would love to know more about what's planned what's going on keep them invested and intrigued about what's happening in the game yeah it's almost like they assume that everyone who plays rocket league follows them on twitter or reddit because those seem to be the only real places where you could find all of that information and even still you kind of have to be looking for it in a lot of cases yeah and and it's crazy to think because they i don't know the numbers here i gotta look at it um they have 75 million players total and that may include double double accounts or whatever but 75 million players and i believe on twitter they have 660,000 followers so that mm -hmm. is not a very big number it's almost it's not even one percent mm -hmm. it's it's 0.88 percent of all players that have played the game are following them on twitter so when they post something on twitter about a new game mode coming out or something not even one percent of their entire audience is seeing this um, which is really unfortunate because there's so many players that come in and out, you know, they have, they have jobs during the day, they want to chill and relax and they come in and they don't even know what's going on in the game. And they may not even revisit the game because they're like, oh, it's the same old, same old Rocket League. Nothing's happening right now. So I'll just go play Warzone or something else because there's nothing new happening. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it, it kind of gets worse over time, right? Because the longer they go without adding new things like that the more that perception is kind of ingrained in people and the less likely people are to come back after a while because they think, oh, that's the game that no new things are ever really added to. Um, we are running out of time here. There's a lot a lot more to discuss. I think uh, we could go on and on and on because we're so passionate about this game, but there's a few things that I just want to list off real quick. You know, a better esports store, have a, a main location to allow fil uh, players to filter through existing teams in the shop instead of using a rotation. I'm not even sure why there's a rotation. It should just allow people to go in and say, hey, I want to support um energy let's go look at what energy has has available i'm gonna buy those uh, those items um they should have team packages that have maybe a little bit of a discount if you buy the entire package of the wheels the banners all that stuff they should have flags for the orgs as well um possible car stickers stickers in the future uh if you can have stickers on the front of the octane or, or on the side of the the fennec or something like that that'd be really cool to see you yeah, know signatures signatures or something that's just like a little etching on the car it'd be really really cool yeah. um voice chat why does an online multiplayer game that's been out for five years not have voice chat yeah, and the voice chat itself isn't even team side; it's public. So if you want to communicate with your team, it's it's impossible to do because you, the the other the other team will hear you. So I think I don't know how exactly how it works, but the audio encoding is definitely a little bit 
not good. <laughs> I think something <laughs> needs to change to help that out. Another thing is verification for creators and pros. They recently added clubs, but they didn't do anything with it. Um, there's verification there, but it's not a very good verification. It's hard to see because it only happens when you're a full team. So in 1v1, you can't even be verified. Uh, there's too many creators in the game being impersonated. I think being able to add the ability to view a pro uh, profile or a rocket ID during a match to see what the player stats are, you know, the game time, all that stuff would be very nice to be able to verify that a little bit more. A verification check mark that's a little bit better uh, would be nice as well for creators and pros, people who have been, you know, noticed in the community and who have uh, a bit of stature in the community to, you know, be a platform that people look out to, look up to, and uh, people may be blindsided by someone trying to pretend to be them. I even did a video a long time ago about me, about me pretending to be Musty, and I played a pro who didn't even know that I was impersonating him. Obviously, it's a bit of a unique situation, but if someone else was able to do the same thing, uh, they could use it uh, for malicious purposes. How about in-game creator flags and banners? You know, we have people who don't really play the game anymore uh, who were sponsored to play the game at the start. They have banners in the games and flags, but it just feels silly that there's no, like, let's say an item shop in the item shop, you can choose, hey, I want to go see Musty's items. He has a flag and he has a banner or even a unique title or something that you can support the, the creator directly. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit biased on that one. I'm not really worried about the money. It's just more a way of, you know, as the game can sort of pay back to the people who keep advertising the game for free. Um, maybe a quick chat overhaul, allowing the text in chat to be seen by all platforms. I know right now PC players can't type to PS4 players or Xbox players and stuff like that. Uh, maybe adding some new quick chats specifically a quick chat that can talk about the exact boost in the tank uh it'll just say hey uh leth has 35 boost or 45 boost something like that it just shows up when you type it or hit it uh possibly adding quick chats that say what area of the field you're in so preset positions designated by psionics that could say like left center left back right back uh in goal like if you're behind the goal line stuff like that like just to be able to quickly chat that to your teammates so you know if they or, or or like dead if it says uh if you just type in i'm dead uh, it'll type it in the chat maybe for rumble specifically adding a quick chat for what rumble power up you have so if you're for example you have spikes it'll say left dash spikes if you don't have a power up and you're waiting it'll say left dash waiting for power up seven seconds or something like that seven seconds until power up uh those are just quick little quick chat things that i thought were kind of cool that could be Helpful and, and very, very minimal change to the actual game or core gameplay that would be easy to add. Removing solo standard is a huge thing. Gibbs tweeted out recently that he's taking 45 minutes to find one game uh, and then another 40 minutes after the next one to just find another match. It doesn't need to be there anymore. Replace it with clubs and a party match, you know, a team match. Uh, standard right now, you can queue uh, with a full party or by yourself. I think that's fine to queue solo standard in that. It's fine enough uh, to add like an actual club system where you can earn points and go towards, you know, maybe getting a new item or something that is in that season it would be very, very cool. Uh, there's so many plugins to choose from to integrate from creators like Bakis Mod, Alpha Console, uh, Glenn GLH GLH recently uh, put it on the Bakis Mod plugins. There's so many little cool little things that you could pull from that that no one would ha feel any harm by you taking that and, and working on improving it and, and polishing it for the actual game. Another thing is creator codes, something that uh, Epic Games is known for in their game Fortnite, uh, just to add some support for the creators when they buy something in the, in the item shop, especially at the price of the items right now. Uh, rotating li limited time modes. So whenever a new, t uh, new game mode comes out, just rotate it for maybe two weeks, even a month even, uh, if it's something cool. Uh, every month that comes out like some of my game modes that i've had uh have made in the past or some stuff that sonics is working on just you know communicate with the com community and see what they want in the game you could even do like a voting system what do we want to put in for this month you know like just have it in the game on the news channel what do you uh ask people what they want to see you can have like a multiple choice of certain things they want to see uh custom training overhaul you guys put custom training in the game but then nothing really came of it you know there's not even a search bar for custom training if someone wants to find the custom training they have to find the code specifically somewhere on a twitter or on a reddit post uh, so being able to search up like a filter for backboards or recoveries or something like that uh be able to filter for types of training uh allow the custom maps to be used for custom training so be able to load in a workshop map or something or an in-game map if that comes down the road uh, and then once again, prop the download for the map beforehand if they have to download the map before playing the custom training. 
Uh, add obstacles, different kind of obstacles. How about preset car positions and movements that you set yourself that can hit the first ball. So you launch the ball up in the air and then the ball flies into it, hits that ball. Then you have another preset where after a few seconds, you have that car hit the ball and then you finish off the three-man passing play and sort of have to adapt to that. How about target zones that if you hit them, you score the goal. Uh, just you have to aim for certain spots. So instead of just going towards the goal, try to practice for passes and stuff like that. I, we can go on and on and on about goal indicators, goal explosions for esports, like different teams and stuff. Demo, custom, custom demo uh, decals, stuff like that. There's so many things and I just think we could go on and on and on. So I just don't want this to drag on, but I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you, Danny, for joining in. Um, yeah. There's definitely an open conversation that we should be having here um, with the community about where we could go with this game. Um, any any final thoughts? Um, um, just that it's a shame that we're running out of time because I feel like there's a lot to say about a lot of these things. And it's unfortunate that there are so many things on this list, but like, I don't know. It just comes from being passionate about the game and just knowing that this game has so much potential and all of us just want to see it be as big as it can be and as good as it can be. And I've, it's, a, it's not to trash psionics or anything like that. It's just, it's all from a place of just love for the game. Exactly, yeah. So it's all just about passion and people who have been invested in this game in so long want to see it thrive and, you know, you know, blow up basically because it is a niche game, uh, but it's so easy to follow for new players and it is a very difficult game to play. So wherever they take this game, I hope that they, they think about that. Um, you know, free to play hopefully hopefully is coming down the road, um, which will, might, you know, help push for some of these other supports that we are support systems that we need in the game to help make it grow and be the game that we know it can be. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see changed. Um, like I said, this is a preface to uh, this update that they're going to be talking about quite soon at the end of this month. I will make a follow-up video on what the actual update that they're, they're excited to show us is. Um, let me know if you guys want to see anything else that I didn't, we didn't mention. I don't think I got to everything in this video. Obviously, no. <laughs> there's just so much uh, to talk about. But um, from what I've talked about today, just let me know what you guys think of that. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.